as maybe before the game that it will be. Um, we scored the goals in the right moments, scored wonderful goals. The right people scored the goals if you want, and um, so all good apart from obviously Jermatip had to go off. We'll come back to Joe, of course, but do you feel like that's a real return to form? We could see you chasing, hunting what I, down. What I, what, yeah, what I saw today was it's not about shape or form actually. It's like um, who we are. So and that's us. Today's respect, second half, especially that was us, was a massive fight, um, and and football, obviously on top of that. I don't know the numbers, but I think that apart from a few minutes in the first half, uh, I, I don't remember that a lot of the ball, but um, it was always pretty quick and counter-attacking, and we defended that really well. Um, but it was just a, a, a good performance, and I saw a lot of things I wanted to see. Yes goal right on half time I mean you must have felt it was coming because you, you had taken control as the first half went on you cannot you cannot really um, be sure that uh, something like this will happen in the second half again because um, they, they changed I think they, they, they made two changes so you never know exactly uh, the way offensively the way we played I, I, I really thought um, we, we, we coped really well with uh, with their formation played around played in played in between so we were so often in and around the box, um, which is really important. Counter press was really good. Um, both half times, the last line defended really well, high enough, but not crazy high. And yeah, no, it was not. Didn't see it coming, but I was not negative about the second half. That's true. And you've mentioned Joel Matip's injury at half time. I mean, it's a, just another problem to deal with. And of course, the question will be asked again. Do you go into the market? Do you bring a centre half on loan, or do you just keep going on? If you if you have a centre half available who is um, with, this, with a reasonable price and the quality we need, yeah, then you can send me a message and I will go for it. So it's not about that. It's about the right, doing the right stuff. We cannot just bring a body in. That doesn't help. Uh, bodies we have, and we have good we have good kids. Nate did exceptionally well. And Reese did so well when he when he played, and all these kind of things. Hendo is obviously there. So yeah, the situation is. Unbelievable, strange, but it's our situation. We have to deal with it. We will see what we do, but it's not. This tonight didn't help for sure, not because it's. It's not a. Oh, it looks like something serious, to be honest with you. So. But still, a big three points. Congratulations. Yeah, exactly. For Thank tonight, you, we can. Thank you. Well, they were interesting uh, comments. So let's get into it then. Um, were you surprised? Liverpool haven't moved into the market, or is it a diff- difficult market in which to manoeuvre at the moment in terms yeah, of centre back? Definitely a different. Yeah, much needed. He doesn't think much has changed. What did you see that was different from Liverpool compared to the last few games tonight? The creation of chances for starters. Don't let anyone say that Liverpool are missing loads of chances and that's why they're not winning. Liverpool haven't been creating chances. They haven't been prizing teams open. Teams have been coming, and teams that are down the bottom of the league really um, have been coming and making it difficult for for Liverpool in recent weeks. Today. They got chances. I thought the wide, the, the the wider of the three up front, Mane and Salah started wide today, and I much prefer it when they do that because as soon as Firmino just starts dropping into that gap, they've got room to make their runs inside. We saw it on at least one of the goals. We saw other chances. Sadio Mane had a few chances. And all of a sudden, when they do that, then the fullbacks can go. It's, it, it doesn't work if fullbacks just play high and stay, stand there. And then all of a sudden, they come inside. And you've just got five flat across, and, and, and a team will just sort of sit back. And, but when you do it quickly, wide, go in, and then out, you know, the fullbacks, it happens in the blink of an eye. And all of a sudden, that's when Liverpool are fluid. That's when they get chances. And at times, Tottenham couldn't handle them, could they? They couldn't handle so, them. Certainly in the first half, uh, Sadio Mane. He caused uh, Sergiori all sorts of problems coming from out to inside, um, drifting in. He couldn't handle his power, he couldn't handle his pace, he couldn't uh, handle the, the, the intelligence of his runs. He was just a mistake waiting to happen. I said it from the start. When I saw the teams line up, I thought it was a risk playing so many inexperienced players and non-reliable players in Sergiori in that back line against a team like Liverpool. And I thought it was a bad, bad decision from Jose Mourinho. And it was Mane's movement that created that all-important goal just before half-time. Yeah, it was. He was brilliant. Outstanding, his, his movement. But as I say, if you start wide, you've got so many more options. He times a run perfectly well. I mean, there's, don't get me wrong, there's mistakes all over the place from Spurs. Aurier to start with, letting his man run. He's onside. 
Um, it's a good touch, and then this sort of cued. Well, I don't know. It, 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 it was a mistake between defender and it's Dyer and Lloris. Obviously, I probably favour Lloris there. I yeah. think he's got to come. He's almost got to come and anticipate the ball's going to come across. Yeah. Once it's, he doesn't even make a step forward. Yeah. Um, he can never score like that with a tap in behind two players. It's such a blow, isn't it? I mean, right before, I mean, injury time in the first half. Jose was thinking, perfect, the longer this goes, Liverpool will come out, there'll be more space for us. Obviously, he got injury to Harry Kane, which is a massive game changer. Goes in, doesn't reappear for the second half. But I agree with Mo, I think the, cap, the captain there, Lloris, has to come and bury that, has to smother that ball. Because it's very hard, I think Andy said it in commentary, if Dyer tries to reach out, he almost scores in his own net. We highlighted it, crossed the ball so the Tottenham defenders face their own goal, causes all sorts of problems. They haven't been doing it in recent weeks, they did it tonight. And at the start of the second half, Tottenham didn't cover themselves in glory again defensively. No, not at all. I think we're going to show that. First of all, there, Doherty lets Mane, Rani just slice it, but Hugo has to do better there. Loris has to do better. Great finish from but Too tight there, Doherty. Um, and look, Bergwijn has to be back. He's there. You see, we're going to highlight him. Davis has got Salah. And there is uh, the goal scorer there. And Bergwijn has to be back there. He's normally very diligent. He normally does his defensive duty. That's why he plays ahead of Gareth Bale uh, and a few others like Mora. Um, but on this occasion, first and foremost, he gets too tight there. The, what he wants to do is fill you, Sadio Mane, and he spun him too easily there. And Jose's got every right to be annoyed with Doherty. And he absolutely slaughters him from the side. You see him. But it's a very, very good finish, Mo, from, uh, from Trent Alexander-Arnold. Yeah, as the ball's coming over, you're just thinking, get your knee over it, keep it down. And here is what you're referring to, Tim Doherty, getting too close, letting him, uh, letting Sadio Mane roll him easily. And then you see they're having a bit of a pop at each other. Yeah. And, uh, and understandable, that's, that's a poor mistake. It might not appear, you know, that it's, you know, he's not, not like he's given a bad back pass or slipped yeah. over. But it's a very basic mistake. You're getting, yeah. gaining nothing there from, from, you know, you're only going to either give a foul away or yeah. you're going to get rolled. Sadio Mane is too, too long in the two, too clever, too strong, too yeah. quick to lose the ball there. So no matter what he did, he made the wrong decision. What about the way Tottenham hit back, though? Some strike for Hoybier's first goal. It was, yeah. He drifted forward. I thought the, the, the midfield of Liverpool got over to one side, the left-hand side, left a gaping space there and he comes onto it and he cuts across it and he just slices it away he almost drifts in Firmino lets him go all of the midfielder across that side of the pitch leaves a gaping hole there on the D and he just slides it he, he cuts across it Mo it's a good technique and he, it's always going away from uh, Alisson yeah I mean he hits it well don't get me wrong but he's not quite out the middle you see slice across it you see the ball spinning away so that would, would suggest there's a bit of slice on it and, uh, and yeah. they're always the ones that go in the corner when you just, just don't quite hit it in the middle. If he absolutely hits that out the middle, it goes down Alisson's throat. Um, but he just mishits it and, uh, and flies into the far corner. But then, Steve, you think, yeah. come on then, go on, there's the momentum. Say, yeah. Let's get forward. Perhaps that's when you need the fans in the stadium. You know, on the up, what can they do? No Harry Kane, but you've got plenty of other options on the bench. He made a few changes. It just never materialised. And I think Liverpool, at that stage of the game, could have put their heads down, but they didn't. They picked it up. They kept possession. They continued to create chances. They won 3-1, but they thought that earlier on they'd gone 3-1 up. Mm. Um, what was your reading of this situation? I was surprised it was, uh, it was, it was disallowed. The referee didn't give a handball there. And then the game goes. There's an one pass there. Sadio Mane in, in, in possession of the ball. Another pass across. S Salah with a good touch. And, and he strikes into the back of the net. I mean, the handball rule, I thought, was only if it was the, the player that makes the assist or the player that scores the goal. Now, this was a... It was in his own half, so it's, it, it can't be, you know, for me, it can't be brought back as in that's the same phase. Um, the referee's gone over, he's looked at the monitor, he's then had it in slow-mo, which I disagree with. That was never supposed to happen with VAR. You're not looking, look, and he's about to make a decision. Then he goes back, oh, let's have another little angle here. And he sees it hits his arm, but if you look, look at it carefully, actually, it hits Dyer's arm before it bounces up and hits Firmino's arm, so... I don't agree with that decision, and I'm not sure the referees assure themselves, if I'm honest. Well, the former Premier League referee Chris Foy has told us, and I want to quote him correctly, a deliberate offence by the attacking team in the build-up 
to a goal occurred. A de- deliberate offence. So, so okay. So then the argument is: Is it a deliberate handball? Now, I don't know. I, I'm not sure you're, you you should be able to bring it that far back. As I say, for starters, um, I'm not sure that it was deliberate. As I say, it hit Dyer's arm. We could argue about that all night, whether it was deliberate or not. There's no argument about the uh, the strike at the end from Mo Salah, but I'm surprised that it wasn't given as a goal. Tim? I thought it was a deliberate handball. Um, I think that it's so far away from the goal that I, I, I agree with Mo. I think that it should be allowed to stand. I think, it, first of all, it comes off of Eric Dyer there and it ricochets onto uh, Firmino's arm. Um, and I think that the referee is going to make a different decision until he sees now, turns around and sees the close-up, sees it in slow motion, and it obviously looks deliberate from there. I would go with his decision as deliberate, um, and the rest is the interpretation. Is it, is it, is it a direct <laughs> chance at goal? I mean, it was two passes later. I think it was showed Liverpool at their best. Yeah. No, it did. What I think we're getting, Steve, and we saw it last week, is we're getting new rules in the game, and it's supposed to make the game better. Of course it is. But what we're getting then is, you know, how do you interpret these? So we saw an offside decision for Aston Villa, the Manchester City, I should say, against Aston Villa the other day. Now, let's get it right. The referees didn't have a clue. They did not have a clue. They've give what they thought on the day. They've backed the referee, you know, uh, uh, in the press and everything else like that. But really, a week later, they changed the rule. I mean, it's just, they didn't have a clue. Today is exactly the same. I'm telling you, that could have been refed by a different referee or had a different person in the VAR hub and that would have been given as a goal. It's, the problem is bringing in these rules, they'd sound great, but all of a sudden something will occur and it's like, oh wow, that's, now it's right on the threshold of, is it the same phase? Is it not? Is it deliberate? And all of a sudden it's just quick, quick, quick. We've got to make a decision. We've only got a minute to make a decision in the VAR hub and all of a sudden they make it. And I bet my bottom dollar there's arguments already up there with the referee saying, I would have given it. And some people say I wouldn't. It's, it's very difficult when you're bringing in so many rules because, as I say, there's, there's these things that, you know, that, that spill over, it's, yeah. we, that, that land in the middle, basically. I agree. We're, we're learning all the time as well. But I think, unfortunately, I think the refer- referees are learning all the time, which shouldn't be the case. I think the huge decision in the game was the offside early on, you know, when Son scores. Because if you get Tottenham playing like they play with something to hold on to, it's a completely different game. Now, we're talking millimetres. Did you have an issue with that one, Tim? No, I think it was off, but right. a millimetre offside. Just check. <laughs> uh, they did make it 3-1 uh, yeah. eventually. And deservedly so. Liverpool were very good tonight. I thought Tottenham were, were pretty poor on the night. I was disappointed with Tottenham. And we spoke about the, uh, the, the crossing before the game. I hope people were watching because... You know, we were talking specifically about Trent Alexander-Arnold and when you should cross it. And we spoke about defenders getting them running back towards their own goal, making it difficult for the likes of Rodon and Doherty. And there we go. Trent is brilliant at doing this. You can't cross the ball when defences are set. Just do it like this. Hit it early. Make the defenders have a decision. Make them run back towards goal. And, and it happened on one or two occasions tonight, Tim. That's a great finish, though, isn't it? He anticipates Rodon's going to take, try and take a touch. He tries to get his arm out of the way, first and foremost, but he doesn't realise Sadio Mane is right on his shoulder. And he smashes it right in the middle of the ball. And his strike is so clean that Hugo Lloris is behind him. He nearly saves it on the way out of the goal. <laughs> so, uh, Liverpool 3-1 winners. Now, we're going to hear from Jurgen Klopp in a moment. Just let me tell you, we're hearing, and we're going to hear from Jose Mourinho also uh, in this show, that 